In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to contribute to an open source project. The project we'll be contributing to is the Ethereum.org website. Specifically, we're going to be contributing to the DSI page and we're going to be fixing this typo right here. And we're going to add a missing resource. We're going to add a resource to the further reading section. Ethereum uses something called GitHub for the version control system. Okay, so first of all, what is Git and GitHub? So quite simply, Git is, some, Git is a type of software that allows multiple people to work on the same project at the same time and track changes over time. So if you're familiar with the example of, for example, Wikipedia, right? So this is the Wikipedia, this is the Wikipedia page for Ethereum. And if you go to history, you can see that different users have contributed to this page over time. Similarly, if you look at a Google Doc, for example, this is a Google Doc I worked on with some friends. You can see where we've made changes to this doc over time and you can see who changed what. And GitHub allows you to do the same thing, but instead of Google Docs and Wikipedia being limited to text, it allows you to do that for any type of thing. Websites, software, even maybe political bills. So for example, you can see here for the D site page, that these are the changes that have been made over time to the D site page on the ethereum.org website. And all these software basically allow you to do the exact same three things. Suggest changes, accept or reject those changes, and then track changes over time. And so essentially the way it works is that you have maybe what's called the master version. So this is the ethereum.org website. You fork that to make a copy. So this is your own local copy of the website. You make commits, which is basically changes. So you say, okay, I want to fix a typo. Then I want to add some links. And then when you say, I want to make a pull request, I want to pull my changes into the ethereum.org website. And that's really all it is. It's basically you take a version of a software, you copy it, you make your changes, and then you request to pull your changes into the main official version. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with an example. First thing we're going to do is we're going to sign up for a free GitHub account. Make sure you use a real email address. Um, just for this example, I'm going to be using a temporary email, but don't do this. Usually it's way better to use a consistent email that you will consistently have access to. So don't use a fake or throwaway email because it's important that you'll have be able to, because this the email is a primary way which will be communicated with about updates on your changes. But just for this example, only for this example, I'm going to use a temporary email. When it comes to picking the username, I've linked to some best practices for picking your GitHub username. Um, the basic thing here is lowercase, the shorter the better, be unique. You want to be consistent with usernames you use in other places. And don't put any context and don't tie your name to your university, your employer, or where you live. You want this to be able to be something that's going to last you for a long period of time because people typically don't change their GitHub usernames. So again, I've linked all this stuff in the docs. Then we can just continue with the registration process and go on ahead and enter the verification code. So again, make sure you have a real email address. And there we go. Nice. Okay, so now that you've created your account, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the page that we want to change. All right, so now we know the file that we want to change. We want to change, for example, here, we, want to, we see that there's a typo right here. So we want to change this typo. The question now is how do we find this page that we want to change in this repo, right? It might not be intuitive. So there's two things you can do to find the file you want to change. One is that a lot of websites will have an edit page button and you can basically use that to go directly to the page you want to find. And then you can use an art and then you can use this command F or control F to find the file that you want to change this file right here. Or some case this is not a page here or you're using a project that doesn't have this page you can use the same concept use the search tool so you want to find a unique word so you probably don't want to use the word maybe like while or is because obviously there'll be a lot of matches but maybe a word like arxiv and then you go to arxiv you go to the main ethereum you go to the main ethereum website and you're going to search here in this repository and then you can see all the places where the word, um, you can see all the different places where the word Arxiv is being used. And then we can see here, there's still, oh, and boom, here we go. So we found the word here. And if you can't find the word, then you can pick a more precise words. So for example, like maybe a, a better word might have been bio.xyz. Boom, there you have it. And that takes us right there. So you have two options there. Okay, so now that we found it, the file that we want to change is this file right here. Now, you might not be familiar with how to use Markdown, so 
this basically shows you the different how to basically format markdown files so we can see here that this is how a link is supposed to be so we can actually just use this guy to say okay well this link should actually be fixed here so we're going to just go ahead and edit this file you can probably see that now i have an error when i hover over that it says that i need to be on a branch to edit the file okay so then if you get an error like this you want to you can fix this by going to the default branch which in this case is dev and then you can edit the file okay so now back to the diagram i explained earlier on about how git works you are making changes in the project you don't have rights we've created a fork of this project for you to commit your proposed changes submitting a change will write to a new branch in the fork so you can send the pull request so basically what this means is that there is the main version of the ethereum website a fork basically means you're going to copy it right you're going to make your changes here so we're going to fix the typo and then we're going to make a pull request to add our version back to the main ethereum website so we can go back to the arc sale thing we can just basically add this right here and then we're going to add a commit to basically saying here fix arxiv typo and then you can add an extended description if you want um, this one is not super necessary fix arxiv link formatting and to make sure we've done it properly we're going to go to the preview which allows us to see our files and then we can even do something called show diff so this will only show the f what changed and we can see here that now we've changed it from it was like this before to now it's such as arxiv so fix link formatting So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a pull request to basically request to have this change that we made added to the official Ethereum website. All right, so now we're going to basically request that this fixed typo. So basically what we're doing right now is that we want to basically do this. So we want to have this fixed typo commit added to the main Ethereum website through our pull request. So we're going to just go ahead and click create pull request. So we can just basically put here. General summary, so basically say um, fix link formatting. And that's it. So the beauty of this now, as you can see here, is that usually within a reasonable amount of time, these people will review um, these changes. So if you want to add more changes, so for example, like this is probably a good, like, so I think usually I would just leave it like this pull request to make it more focused. But let's go ahead and maybe make one more change, which is, okay, so I wanna add this podcast, which um, Paul Cole has did on the Zima Red podcast. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna make, an, I'm gonna add another change here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to files changed. So there's two options here. I could have either done this in a separate PR, but now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to uh, edit file. And then I'm gonna to go to the bottom here and I'm gonna add another link. And, I'm going to and again, if I'm not sure, if you're not sure how to edit a markdown file, this is, um, there's documentation showing how you can do different stuff. It's pretty intuitive. So I I'm using Anchor because it has links to Apple, Google, and all the different podcast providers. And it's also the first link on, on Google. I'm gonna put here podcast. People know that it's a, um, and then you want to basically commit directly to that branch. And again, before I commit, let me just make sure it looks good. So Paul Cole has, and if I click on it, if I command click on it, this takes me to the right place. Yep, it takes me to the right place. And there you have it. So I fixed the typo for the Arxiv link, and I've added a link to the. Paul Cole has the side podcast. And there you have it. So if those two changes get approved, then I would have officially been able to have committed something to the Ethereum.org website. And that is how you contribute to a GitHub repo. All right, so to make it even more concrete, here's an example of the pull request we just made. And you can see here, we made two commits. The first one, this one fixed typo is the fix link, fix the link formatting. And then here we added a link, so that corresponds to this commit. So these are just basically two types of changes. And you can see the two changes here. This first change here is the first commit. And then this change here is the second commit. And then PR, 
7024 corresponds to this pull request here. So we're requesting that we want to, we're requesting to pull these two changes into the main Ethereum website. And then my local copy of the Ethereum.org website is called patch one. Now that I've submitted my pull request, it's now time for other people to review my pull request. And here are some tips for managing your pull, re pull request review. First thing is you want to be responsive. So there's a great blog post by Michael Lynch, and I have a blog post here where I've linked all the resources mentioned. So the link will be in the description to this video. And in this here, he talks a lot about advice on what to do and how to do code reviews. And one thing he recommends is to be responsive. So this is both for the reviewer, but also I think for the person who's getting their code review, you want to be super responsive. Um, when people give you feedback or suggestions, you want to implement it quicker. That way, the faster you can feed people feedback loop, the faster the feedback loop, the faster your changes get merged. The second thing is to be, be kind and be polite. Sometimes over the internet, sometimes these changes can be very contentious. They can be very subjective. So it's just always good to maintain good internet etiquette. There's a great blog post here about being empathetic, being polite, etc. So I would recommend you to read these two blog posts as well if you just want to learn more about how to be a good code reviewer and how to have your code reviewed and responded. Okay, so cool update. So while I was recording this video, actually, my PR got approved. I made this PR just about an hour ago and already we have Corwin, shout out to Corwin, has already approved these changes and given me some nice feedback as well. So he seems to be following the advice of start reviewing immediately and also being empathetic and polite and nice. So shout out to Corwin. And so if all goes well, this should be approved in probably pretty soon and it should be merged into the official Ethereum.org website. The beauty of open source software is that it allows anyone to contribute to a project that they're interested in. So the Ethereum.org website has 823 contributors. And this website gets about 4 million views every month, right? So it's pretty cool that anyone can contribute to one of the most popular sites that is behind one of the most popular technologies in the world. So if these 823 people can do it, so can you.